rules are simple, but the challenge is immense. No shoulder pets, tames that can be carried, or typical boss dinos allowed. That means no Rexes, Therizinos, or any other dinos people normally use in these fights. Equip a level 150 saddles across the board, our 19 contenders will be backed by the commanding presence of a loyal Uteranus providing that extra boost. No Overseer because the movement speed required to get through the tech cave and chase the Overseer during the fight would shorten our list by a lot. It's important to note that the tames in this series aren't typically used in boss battles because of the amount of mutations you need to make them competitive, but all the dinos competing will have around 23,000 health and 1200% melee. This will give them all a fair shot at defeating at least one of the Guardians. It won't always be feasible to reach these stats depending on the dinos we are using, but I will display the amount of mutations plus 55 levels it took in order to reach it. You can make the call on if the juice is worth the squeeze based off whatever server settings you're using. 55 levels are applied after the mutations in order to simulate the leveling up process prior to using your dinos in a boss battle. A passing score is earned if the dino emerges victorious in the boss battle, showcasing its prowess. A failing score doesn't imply that the dino lacks the potential to triumph. It simply means that at this stage it may not be the most practical choice. Now let's introduce our competitor and get right into the fighting. Following the rules of the challenge, we wound up with the following stats on our Ankies. With melee and health base stats at 50, we wound up needing around 65 mutations and our 55 levels to reach this. Alpha bosses are tough and these stats on our Rex might do the trick, but we'll have to see how the Yankee does. Stepping into the first boss fight with the Gamma Broodmother, I'm gonna be honest. I expected the Yankees to make short work of her, essentially. Maneuvering was difficult as they're just really slow creatures and it was kind of tricky to get the Broodmother fully surrounded. The amount of damage we were taking was on the low end, which is good but the damage output was a lot less than I expected. Not only was the maximum hit lower than expected, but the rate of attack was super slow, but not because the Yankee just has a slow recovery between attacks. The strange thing I noticed, and something I'll highlight throughout the video, is multiple Yankees would be right up against the boss and they wouldn't do anything. They would just sit there and not attack. It doesn't matter how ugly it is, because in the end, the crew pulled it off with our first win and passing score for the Gamma Broodmother. Next up, we have the Gamma Megapithecus. At first, I had my doubts because of all the struggles we had with the Broodmother. Megapithecus is known to hit a lot harder, so DPS is extremely important. These Yankees just don't have that. Watching the crew dwaddle along towards their impending doom was kind of amusing. The Yankees have a horrible time trying to get within range due to the knockback so graciously provided by the Megapithecus. Surprisingly, the damage output seemed to be a little bit more consistent once the Yankees were able to get a few of them in position, and before I knew it, they had put a serious dent in its health bar. In the end, we wound up losing one Yankee, and a decent chunk of the remaining soldiers only took about 25% of their total health before they got to the finish line and earned a passing score against the Gamma Megapithecus. The most maneuverable of the three guardians is the dragon because he can fly. The Yankees would be at a huge... Seriously, they walk like people in the grocery store. Watching the little chonkers roast in dragon flame was quite the spectacle. If you needed one reason why these guys are terrible to use in a boss fight, this is it. They literally get in range and don't do anything. Before I knew it, I was on the run. As I looked back, I couldn't help but shed a tear. I watched my valiant gladiators drop one by one. Honestly, the fight was a little more one-sided than I had expected and handed the Yankees their first failure. Hopping right back into the fray, we took on the Beta Broodmother. Coming off a defeat is no good, but the primary reason these guys couldn't hold their own against the dragon is honestly, they just couldn't attack him. Something's a little off with their targeting in the hitboxes and it only allows them to attack the dragon from certain spots around his model. Surely, I thought, we can at least kill one of the Beta bosses. We didn't lose any Yankees while fighting the Gamma Broodmother, so why not her? 
With her only down a quarter of her health and us already losing fighters, I started to have my doubts. This fight, just like the Gamma Bird Mother, was plagued with positioning issues and instances where Ankies would be stuck in a run animation while right next to her, nothing preventing them from attacking. The damage output of the Yankees during this fight just didn't seem like it was enough. I thought it would be a close fight for a while, and eventually the Broodmother got down to 50% health, but so was the Uteranus that I was riding. I just didn't think they'd have enough juice to pull off this win. My suspicions were correct, but we're not quitters here, so we keep fighting on as the Yankees start to perish one by one, and the UD's health gets down to a sliver. Eventually, this wonderful lady takes out all the dinos, handing us another fail. But to my surprise, she starts to remove all of my clothes in an effort to keep me in her lair as her little love toy. So I had hoped. Out of the battle, but not the war, we still had a monkey we heard was talking shit, so we needed to pay him a visit. The Yankees charged into battle. <clears throat> lurched into battle, like their lives depended on it, and met the Beta Megapithecus head on. I thought this would be the end of the line because there's no possible way we'd be able to take this dude on based off how the last fights went. Boy was I wrong. We lost some Yankees early on as my view was obstructed by monkey poop, but I didn't mind it because it reminded me of my childhood. Before I knew it, the Megapithecus was starting to take some serious damage. There was no way we were going to pull this off, I thought. But if you provide your Anki some support from the stray minions that the Megapithecus summons, you can free them up to fight the big guy. This isn't always going to apply, but when you're using a dino with such low speed and horrible turning radius, it's kind of necessary. Towards the end of the fight, I was kind of blown away at how many Yankees were left. Is it possible that we could beat an alpha boss with these dudes? I didn't let the stray thoughts distract me too much because this guy still wasn't defeated and the Yankees needed to put him in the dirt. The chicken started to run away but turned and gave me one last roar of defiance and somehow let the Stumpy Gang catch up to him and finally drop his ass earning another passing grade. Surrounded by the red glow of fame and fortune death, or whatever it is, all these dudes know is they're happy to sharpen their tails on the corpses of giant apes and not rocks anymore. Could they overcome an alpha boss on the island? At first, I was able to get the Megapithecus to focus on me, but not touch me, as the Yankees blocked the way. I was able to do this multiple times, and I thought there is no way in hell this is happening, these guys were actually going to beat an alpha boss. Giant rocks were flying and the big man was pounding his chest, but the Yankees were determined. They kept landing blow after blow. The kiting kept continuing and I was legitimately getting excited to pull off the impossible. We even had this jerk cornered and below 50% health. Sadly, the line started to falter and the Yankees started to lose fighters at an alarming rate. I still believe getting this dude down to a quarter of his health was a heck of an accomplishment considering we're using Ankies to fight. One after the other, my soldiers kept getting killed, but considering how much of a pounding we already gave this guy, I got bold and leapt from my saddle to avenge my fallen comrades, and earned our last failure. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video and hope to make more like it. Please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what other underdogs you'd like to see try this out. I appreciate everyone's support. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.